Welcome everyone. This is our session on news writing, the basic concepts. In this session, as well as in the sessions that follow in the later days, we will be discussing what journalists do. What are the various kinds of news writing that are required? What are the other kinds of uh, written scripts that are required of journalists? So here we will begin with the very basic concepts of news writing and we have tried to design this session in a way that not only those who are students or teachers or practitioners of journalism will be able to follow this but also those who are simply interested in journalism and haven't done a formal training or a course so far. So let us begin. The agenda of this session is understanding news the elements of news, what is news writing and how do we do it, and approaches of writing news in newspapers. For the last point, we would be discussing a few stories from the day's newspapers and we will figure out how news stories are written and what are the things that have to be kept in mind while you're uh, writing a news story. So here we go. Understanding news. We first need to understand and uh, describe what news is like there have been multiple definitions, maybe as many definitions as the number of journalists. So uh, the first thing that we need to understand here is it, that news is a timely account of a recent, interesting and significant event. What are the operational terms here? The operational terms are one, it has to be timely. Two, it has to be something of interest. Who are you writing news for? You're writing news for people who are not too much concerned with what's going on, but they'd rather like to know what's happening in the world. So it is a timely account of a recent, interesting and significant event. Until and unless it is of some importance to these people, they would not find it interesting. And if they don't find it interesting, news is as good as dead. Another definition says it is the report of an event which is of large public interest. A very concise, precise and to the point kind of a definition which talks about how you are reporting an event and this is a considerable new event which is of large public interest. So it is not something which is pertaining to the interest of um, maybe a few people only. It is something which has to do with the larger interest of the society. So this is called news. I remember in the days of yore, people used to define news as North, West, South and East, N, E, W and S. So ideally that was the definition of news, whatever you can get, whatever is new, a new concept, a new idea, a new happening and even from any of the four directions and you bring it on together for your consumers, you called it news. Today things have changed from those times till date things have changed. It is no more the uh, North, East, South and West. It is more about what makes a difference to the society and who are the kind of people you're talking to. Like marketing of a product or service, this has become more in terms of your niche audience. And what is it which interests this section of the audience? Also, news is defined as an account of an event which the media publishes in the belief that by doing so, it will profit. Like I just said, that news has moved onto the direction of marketing. Why has that happened? Because media cannot exist in isolation and media is a capital intensive uh, thing, which means that when you are publishing uh, anything, that is the product that you're giving to the audience, the product should be able to earn back some amount of profit for you. So this is an account of an event which the media publishes and it believes that it is going to earn profit for them. So when you uh, talk about a newspaper, you will see that it will be filled with not just news, it will also be filled with various other contents like an article or a rejoinder or an editorial or various backgrounders, columns, so on and so forth. So those are various formats of different contents that have been presented to you, the consumer, in the form of news and content. And other than that, there is some kind of paid content in the newspapers which we call the advertisements. Um, around a decade back or maybe more than that, uh, there was a culmination of these two things, the paid 
information and the news or things that had nothing to do with payment from anybody. And these two combined together to form advertorials. So these were editorials which were largely advertisement based. So they were propagating a person, an idea or a product or an organization in the name of editorial. So what do I mean by that? This simply means that say for example, I am talking of an air purifier. So I will give you the benefits of why air purifier has become important these days when pollution has increased and how do we make use of it and how is it responsible for keeping the members of a family within the household healthier by making use of air purifiers and at the end it will be you know recommending a certain product certain brand to you so that is what we call an advertorial or a paid advertisement so this is about news and the way news has been changing. But just to sum this up, what do we mean by news? News is simply reporting of an event which is of large public interest, which has something to do with larger people at large, the greater society. And now let us look at the elements of news. Um, news has to be presented such as the audience gets the most important information in the minimum possible words and the shortest possible time. Now what happens is with the, you know, uh, the way there is a greater proliferation of media, we don't just have so many newspapers, we also have so many news channels and uh, not talking of the radio channels per se, and we also have the internet. So through internet and through various other news portals, we get on to those kind of news and those kind of information which are which have happened just in the recent past, which could mean maybe a few hours time. So uh, news today has become something that you present to the audience in the shortest possible time. And then there is this important uh, concept of word economy which does not really is, uh, pose a limitation to the internet or the online medium because there is no dearth of space to write your words. But for definitely for the newspaper and the television or the radio, there is a certain limitation. And what is that limitation? We need to practice word economy because we need to minimize the number of words we are using to express an idea or the story or the news that we are um, presenting before the audience. Why? Because it takes greater amount of space in the newspaper or it eats up more amount of uh, you know, footage or more the timeliness. By timeliness, we mean how new is your story. So people buy media for newness. Why, why else do you think do we need to buy? Everybody likes to have a newspaper or read newspaper on their mobiles or watch the TV channel. Why? Because they want to keep abreast with what is happening and with what is latest. Talking about that, people buy media for newness. This is something that we can also hear about or know about through other means, through friends, through neighbors, through people who we speak to generally. But we like to have our own media. The reason is we like the news to come to us as quickly as can be. So this is the newness. The word proximity uh, generally means closeness and this is what it is supposed to be when we talk in terms of news. Events close at hand are always more important. So any sort of thing which happens maybe uh, at a place near you will obviously bear greater relevance for you as compared to something that has taken five taken place 500 kilometers away from you. So proximity is very important. And now the, this proximity, when we talk in terms of news, is not just geographical proximity. So a murder that takes place in the street next to where I live is important to me, but another murder that takes place 150 kilometers away is less important to me. No, that's only the geographical proximity. We are also talking about emotional proximity. So say for example, uh, we were just talking about terrorist attacks. A terrorist attack takes place in Naples or Burma or Bhutan and say for example 50 people die there makes a lesser news than a similar incident taking place in the United States of America. Act on a uh, on humongous number of people, large number of people. So size is very important when you decide about whether something is going to make news or not going to make news. So. Um, the number of people who are involved or affected will decide about uh, the size of the news and small events but prominent ones will also make into news. Say for example, when Lady Diana was killed, 
it made news and it stayed into news or when mother teresa died or when some kind of such political murder takes place political assassination takes place those are the kind of things why because it involves prominent people and that is why those small ev events uh, despite being small because they are prominent they will make news so this is how size becomes an element of news next is significance <clears throat> When I say significance, as the word denotes, it is the importance that a certain uh, event or an occurrence has for people at large. So it is the importance to the audience, uh, you know, that the media gives. Uh, when I say importance, like I was just speaking about a new presidential elections, probably uh, no other country's presidential elections other than Pakistan would excite India so much as the United States. So people generally are talking about the United States uh, presidential election in uh, the learned circles of the country. So the, it is the importance that is associated with that country which uh, you know which the audience of a media enjoy. So and it also depends on the clientele. If this media is talking more to people who have um, you know um, some kind of trade or family relations with another country and that is the kind of NRIs, those kind of circles that this media is serving, then obviously this is the kind of news that will get uh, uh, you know, published more. So similarly, it is the clientele that the media which is, which is seeking to serve. Okay, uh, probably a daily newspaper has a different kind of clientele than a cinema magazine. So you understand now how clientele of the two media are different this magazine or an e-zine or an e-newspaper how are they different an e-newspaper could be a mass or a class newspaper and could be catering to a large humongous number of audiences it will involve the elderly it will involve the housewives it will involve the um, the young adults and it will also have something for the children as compared to this a magazine on cinema will will uh, specifically speak about cinema related affairs will speak about how cinema uh, watching platforms have been changing and how it has affected the film industry, various aspects related to cinema. And what is important for this magazine on cinema will not be the same as what is important for say a newspaper like Times of India or Hindustan Times. So what decides what is important? The audience decides what is important. So a media house obviously always has a hang of, always is very clear of who the clientele is, who the customer is. And accordingly, you serve that kind of news to these people. Okay, now these are the basic factors that we just dealt with, prominence and size and significance and uh, timeliness. Those are the important basic factors, basic elements. There are a few other secondary elements you may say for news. Now these are human interest. Human interest is not always secondary, but it does form an important news value. But what do we mean? What is the difference between a news element and a news value? A news element is something which is responsible for an event becoming news. And what is human interest? Why is it called a news value? Because this exclusively depends on the purveyance, on the uh, discretion of the journalist to decide whether or not this can make news. Like you have seen all... Um, a number of standalone incidents like I remember there was this case many many years back of a little boy called Prince who fell into the well and how the army was deployed to bring him on, uh, bring him uh, back and um, media at large covered it extensively. So that what was involved there? It wasn't something that was uh, you know putting the future of the society at stake. It wasn't about terrorism, it was, wasn't about environment, it wasn't about energy issues. It wasn't about politics or economics, but it had a, an invariable human interest angle in it. Value. When media takes the discretion to decide what must be brought to uh, limelight and what must be given adequate coverage because of some other reason which is not extensively for people at large and which does not involve any sort of profit motive. So this is called human interest. Then we have conflict. 
Now the conflict can arise due to anything. It can be a communal conflict. It could be a, the, a conflict involving the third gender. It could be a conflict related to some other the way of educating people, etc. So the conflict can have multiple reasons. And this is also a factor that makes news. So any sort of um, um, happening which can lead to incitement of an offense will make news. And this is how this becomes a secondary factor of significance when we decide upon the elements of news. Also novelty, something that is very new, like I was just speaking of an example that uh, we won't have any handheld devices in future, probably all we would have is a microchip on the shoulder. And through that we would operate on things in the air, thin air. So this is something which is novel. So anything that is new, which hasn't happened before, is accounts to novelty and novelty also certainly makes into news. Of course, it will, it may not uh, be a hard news, but definitely it uh, fills in for soft news. And then adventure. Adventure could be a 70 year old lady uh, could be the first one to uh, climb onto Mount Everest. So this has a feeling of adventure in it and the fact that gets stressed is age is just a number. So these are some other factors, human interest, conflict, novelty, adventure, which decide what can be news. So there goes the element of news. Okay, I was just speaking about hard and soft news. Let me just reiterate this in short. When I say hard news and why novelty or human interest or conflict or adventure cannot make hard news, not necessarily they cannot, but hard news is the kind of news which must uh, come into foray which must be presented to the audience as soon as can be like all those definitions that were talk we were talking about in news in the term news that it is the report of an event which is of large public interest and it must be presented under timeliness we said that it must be represented in the shortest possible time and in minimum possible words what we basically meant was there were a few factors there were certain kind of content that require uh, a kind of coverage which has to be done as quickly as possible. On the other hand, there can be other sorts of news, other kinds of write-ups, I should say, other kind of content, which can be presented after some time, after a few days, and it would not really make a difference to the choice of the story. Now, this could be, say, for example, a feature on a historical feature or a feature on the historical tombs of the city say for example the Safdarjung tomb or the red fort or st stuff like that. So if you are writing a feature on that, there is no timeliness attached to it. So that is something which can get published after 7 days, after 15 days, next year, anytime. And it will not mess with the uh, likelihood of or the, with the popularity of that article. So that is what we call soft news. Now, let us talk about news writing. Here we are talking of hard news only. And um, of course, what is important to understand is there are two techniques which have been traditionally always expressed as uh, uh, a part of this class on news writing. One is the writing techniques of five W's and an H. When I say five W's, the five questions that are essentially important. Who, what, where, why, when. And one H stands for how. So anything that will uh, that will be close to be to being called news is something that will talk about one of these six factors or more, more than one of these six factors. So what has happened, when it has happened, why it has happened, where it has happened, and how it has happened is very important to understand. So. Uh, who could be a prominent figure, who could be the aggrieved party, who could be a large number of people who are facing the music due to some policy of the government, it could be anything. What is the actual thing that has taken place? Where? Is it in the national capital? Is it in some uh, village, some remote village which was near the sea? Where has it happened? When has it happened? When again brings us back to timeliness and as soon you can report the event, the better it is for you as a media person, as a media house. Why has it happened? Okay, why and how are two factors when we're discussing them, we're actually getting into the interpretation of an event. 
if something has taken place in a certain manner, why it has happened in a certain manner and how it has taken place in that, uh, in that kind of a circumstance and what could have uh, been done to prevent this or what could be done in future to see to it that such events do not get repeated. So those are the five W's and an H. And most of the stories you will see either in newspapers or on the internet will be talking about two or more of such factors. Another thing is as you can see this triangular uh, shaped thing, this is another technique of writing. It has traditionally been adopted, I mean uh, journalism in India is over, is close to 250 years old when we talk about the history of journalism and since that time till this date inverted pyramid has changed its way, the way it has been presented in news these days but it has not really gone off fashion any day. This is an inverted pyramid as you can see on the slide. And what does it show? It shows that um, it is depicting certain kind of news. When I say this, what do I mean? I mean that the more important things come on top and that is why the base is broad. And what is the least important, what can be cut off, what the reader can leave out, maybe the, those last one or two paragraphs of the story is what comes at the bottom. And that is why this is an inverted pyramid. These days of course this is changing, earlier it was more about who said what was said or what happened, the 5 W's and an H that we were just discussing about. Today it has changed to a certain extent because uh, th the interpretation part of it, how do you make meaning, say for example a certain uh, policy has been formulated by the government which is applicable to the farmers of the country. So what do we do with the MSQ, what do we do with the you know minimum selling price MSP? Those are the issues, the interpretation, how do you make meaning for somebody who is not a farmer, for somebody who is only uh, uh, you know, uh, concerned with what is happening in the country, how do you construct meaning out of this? That comes in the interpretation part. So what has happened, when it has happened, why it has happened, who's done that, how it was possible comes in the top part of a story, though that is the more important part of the story. And that is why the pyramid is inverted and these days because more and more of interpretation is getting added to it, the shape of this inverted pyramid is getting changed. How is it getting changed? Today we have more of a cylindrical shape followed by a triangle. So the least important things come in the last paragraph and it is easier for the editors to use their scissors on the last paragraph. It is also easier for the reader or the viewer to forego the last part of the story. Why? Because the more important information comes to them right in the beginning of the story. So that is about news writing and now I would like to, uh, I have two newspapers of the day with me. One is the normal political dailies that we usually have and one is an economic newspaper and I would quickly read out a paragraph or two from each story so that you can understand how timeliness, how you know various factors that we discussed, various elements and how news writing techniques that we were talking about, the 5 W's and an H come into play in the actual news making. Look at this, AAP kicked off a political row on Tuesday when it claimed CM Arvind Kejriwal had been put under house arrest by Delhi police to stop him from joining the Bharat Bandh in support of the farmers. The party claimed this had happened soon after he returned from the Singhu border on Monday after expressing his support for the farmers. It alleged no one was being allowed to meet him. So this story tells you this is the very first paragraph of the story and um, purposely I did not read out the headline to you. This is the first paragraph, the lead, the opening paragraph and it tells you what has happened, who is that prominent person who is uh, you know uh, against whom some action has been taken, in this case the CM of Delhi, what has happened and what are the sources. Sources means those people who you can credit with some belief are saying about it. So the more important parts of the story come right in the beginning. If you have read only this one paragraph and you leave out the rest of the story, you are still able to know what is going on about this particular incident. Similarly, okay, about Corona vaccine, Britain's National Health Service delivered its first shots of the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine on Tuesday opening a mass vaccination campaign with little precedent in modern medicine and making Britons the first people in the world 
to receive a clinically authorized, fully tested vaccine. So it tells you that this is, this is a kind of news which is concerning a large number of people. Unlike the previous one where we were concerned with one person, the, the prominent person, the CM of Delhi. Here we are talking of people at large. We know that we have been facing a pandemic and it is not over yet and we are still struggling with making a vaccine. So now Britons have become the first people in the world to receive that vaccine which is also clinically authorized. That means there are, it has been tested that it is befitting um, you know, to take this vaccine by general people. And the campaign has opened up and they mentioned the name of the company for this. So you see how different factors amongst the five W's and an H become important in different stories. So for different stories, the, the way you open a story will be different. Like the earlier one where we were talking about the CM of Delhi, we saw that it was more factual in nature. You were talking about who it has happened to, you've talked about what has happened and what are the uh, people who know about it, about the development are saying about it. But here on the other hand, when we're talking about the vaccine, we have tried to uh, put in more opinion into it. Like we have said that Britons have become the first people in the world to receive this max vaccine. We've also told that it has been clinically tested. And so this is a, the way how interpretation gets mixed in it. So though there is not much of interpretation since it is only the opening paragraph, yet it is not only mentioning the five W's and an H. It's not just revolving around those, one of those or one or more of those six factors. This is how stories get treated differently. Different kinds of stories will get treated differently. Let me also give you one example from an economic newspaper. And this talks about Amazon, one of the largest e-commerce companies in the world. And this says, Amazon is evaluating a potential investment of nearly $100 million in India's largest branded pharmacy chain, Apollo Pharmacy, according to two people privy to the online retail giant's plans. If the deal fructifies, Amazon will gain access to Apollo's front-end pharmacy business with over 3,700 outlets from where medicines can be delivered to consumers' doorsteps. This will give the Seattle-based e-commerce major a foothold in the country's burgeoning e-pharmacy market, where rivals such as Reliance Industries and Tata Group are also making a play. So this is an economic story and how they're covering it. They're talking more about figures. They're talking more about the international perspective. Amazon is a US-based company. And we have our own players in India. We have Reliance, we have Tata Group, we have others as well. So how it is making a dent into the Indian market? And then how, what kind of a, an outlook does it have? It looks out at covering 3,700 outlets which are responsible for you know, um, doorstep delivery of medicines. And how this is going to have an impact on the share market, on the economics of the country, on everything, the global market at large. So this is how different, uh, kind of stories get